sleep, but I, I haven't been able to sleep. And I've been feeling, especially that night before, I was feeling really, like, anxious. Like, like my anxiety, I already have anxiety, but I was, like, ten times <laughs> plus. It was really bad. I've suffered for from society for years. Uh, well, I've I've had severe. I have issues. I have uh, insomnia too. Mm-hmm. I've had it since two thousand and three. Um, there's some nights that I just can't sleep. Like during that purge, I was up for forty eight hours straight. The next day, I managed to get two and a half hours of sleep, mm-hmm. but I was still many trips to the room, and I didn't have an appetite, and it was weird, because I listened to, it's not a song, it's a like a, a pastor of a mega church named T.D. Jakes, mm-hmm. it was him talking, and it was more like a, a not like a sermon, a religious sermon. It was like him speaking about people and change their mentality. And it's called Rejoice. And it's on, if you look on Pandora, type in Rejoice by T.D. Jakes, J-A-K-E-S. I can look for it here. Uh, that's what fixed my mentality that no doctor could fix. And I listened to it 15 to 20 times one night. Just I kept playing it over and over. I memorized a lot of it. And that's what fixed reality and helped me with my anxiety and my depression. And ever since then, I haven't had a whole lot of, I haven't had any depression. I've had a little bit of it, not to the level uh, like I had it before. And I posted it on my page, and I said, everybody needs to listen to this. Is it Rejoice? And then TV? somebody made a post. Yeah, Rejoice. I like Christian music anyway, even if I'm like, I am Christian, but I'm open-minded. So I'm not strict on, like, oh, witchcraft is bad or anything. Like, out of, the, out of that, I'm not against that. Yeah, I'm not like that either. Oh, okay. uh, he didn't really, he, he mentioned God a couple times, but. Is that it? Yeah, it's black background. We could play it. Just it's T is in Tom, D is in David, Jake's. So this is the song, you guys. Yeah, that's it. You have to fix your mind. That's how it starts out. Oh, that's cool. My husband loves music more than I I do. I went to art school, but he he loves. It. I might be listening to this later again. You have to fix the mind. Oh. This went back. It's like it's true. It's like <laughs> over seven minutes long. I'll let the audience. And I listen to that right. fifteen to twenty times. Yeah, because it's true and what it's, he's that's saying. That's what fixed me. It's, and no doctor has been able to fix me. No medications have been able to fix me. That song, it's, it's not really a song. It's a preach. Mm-hmm. I call it speaking truth. That's what fixed my mentality, and it took me since. My mid thirties to do this, yeah, it's like to get when, over this anxiety. When people are praying, getting this depression, and they keep praying for like, it's like the law of attraction. Like you, you can't pray for like, let's say, I want more money, and you're praying for that. You're actually putting out like you need money, and you're putting out like you don't have money. You would have to pray, like, or say, or manifest what you want to say. I have money. I'm grateful. Thank you. Like, whatever you have, and it will amplify. So you just literally rewired your mind with that. That's yeah, I did. And see, I don't, I don't pray. I just say, please. Like, if I'm struggling with something, I just say, please help me. Yeah. Uh, and I'm talking about. I say it to the astral world. I, I don't, I don't say, please help me, God. I just 
please help me. And I'm referring to the astral world and the ethereal world. And I'm not referring to a Jesus and a God. I'm just, there's, I'm referring to that higher power uh, because I do believe in miracles, but I don't necessarily believe in calling someone that was once said to walk the earth and is now, you know, was once a person, but then he died. I don't necessarily call that higher power. I believe it's a power, but I don't believe it's a person that died, that actually lived and then I just think it's all energy. Yeah. Like it's an energy form. That's who I'm talking to when I say, please help me. You know, I need help with something. Um, we we're talking about uh, astral, like energy. Oh. The theory is called the theory of relativity. Not, energy is neither created nor destroyed, it only changes form and recycles itself. Yeah, yeah, is that, yeah. Is that called the theory of relativity? Let me see. Let me just double check. Albert Einstein. Yeah, this is science. People probably like this is not. No, this is science. Look it up. It isn't like out of it's out of this world, but it's not. You know, uh, the theory of relativity. It was. It was Albert Einstein. Energy cannot be just. Dis- um, yeah. created nor destroyed it can only change form the theory of relativity usually encompasses I'm, I'm bad at saying so two interrelated theories by Albert Einstein special relativity and general relativity special relativity applies to all physical phenomena in the absence of gravity general relativity explains the law of gravitation and its relation to other forces of nature But that's where. Yeah, I I was talking to Sonny on my that other interview, and it 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 goes. I don't know if it's called the theory of relativity, but it, it was Albert Einstein, and it said energy is not created nor destroyed; it only changes form, mm-hmm. or something like, like that. And that's what I believe when a human dies, their energy they. Oh, the okay, person's body uh, dies. You go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> they they just change vessels. Like I think when a person dies, their soul leaves, but they never truly die. They just go to the astral world, and eventually they're reincarnated to another vessel, aka a human skeleton. Mm-hmm. Or you know, sometimes some people believe that you can be reincarnated as an animal. Or even a snail, you know, something. That's got to be interesting life, a snail. <laughs> it's <a> very slow, <laughs> right? Um, I found something. I think this is what you're talking about. What energy cannot be created or destroyed. The first law of thermal di- thermodynamics conversation states that energy is always conserved. It cannot be created or destroyed. In essence, energy can be converted from one form into another in the process of energy transfer. Energy, Some energy will dis- dissipate as heat. And quote by Einstein, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It's from Abel Einstein. So it's just... It's yeah, that's what we were talking it's about. Called the first law of thermal dynamics. He had something too that thermal dynamics. He would talk about the is I forget the name too. It's about that. This is more about that the um the mystery or the it's something with a theory that's called something about weird. I forget the name for it. He has another theory too, and it's it talks about that same thing. But this is what you were talking about. E equals MC squared. Yeah, that's the same guy. <laughs> Energy equals mass times <laughs> E equals MC squared. Energy equals mass t- times the C stands for Energy equals mass times 
something squared C. I don't know what the C stands for. Matter. matter. Okay, he talked about. No, no. E is energy. So it's E is energy equals. To matter. M, which is mass. And then there's a C squared. So I can't remember what the C stands for. Oh, here. I think I found it. E, energy, mass, and I think speed of light is the C. I'm not that good at science, <laughs> but I'm interested in all. It's a lot to do with quantum mechanics. That's what he would talk about, too. Quantum mechanics is um, what this would go into is more related to what you're talking about, like how the mind and the energy and how, like, dimensions and like time jumps that's what quantum they were i was just listening again to something somebody was talking about how this all could be this is theory this isn't fact it's all it, relative yeah of uh, this could be all a huge cgi this is all like me and you could be just computer <laughs> um simulations and stuff and i find that interesting too i think it was yesterday i was just listening to it on coast to coast me and coast to coast i love that show because they'll put anything on there and they bring in physicists and they bring in scientists to talk about this stuff it's not mainstream science it's like a little different it's science but it's it's something the mainstream science doesn't like because it's different and it would have to rewrite everything if they agree with a lot of the theories that they talk about yeah I probably closed my my dad was well he still got his engine he's a he was he's a civil engineer so I was always good in high school college and my son is a computer engineer and he had to take some hard classes in physics and stuff like that. And just something that I, I would never have been able to do. Like he's, he, he, he was building computers when he was like 10 years old. And one time he, he, he made a fan with a old part, a old fan computer, a old CPU unit. And he took some wires and somehow he rigged up a nine volt battery and some wires and hooked it to the fan and he made the fan work. And he was like 12 or 13. We did that. So now he's a computer engineer and codes. He does coding and he can write square. They're kind of, didn't they, uh, did they just recently, or they're going to, they released some files from the Kennedy assassination? Oh, that's a good, you know what's going to happen? I'm not sure about that, but they are working on releasing on the, um, or disclassifying files on the UFO. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, when Kennedy was assassinated, I don't know, remember who it was. I don't know if it's the CIA or a judge or something, but they weren't going to unseal the documents from his investigation and his death until. Oh, yeah, I remember. The, that. What was it? 2050, 2060, when all, everybody uh, was living, was would be dead. So they oh, made yeah. it um, classified until a certain year. K. F. Kennedy. JFK classified. Ben folds documents. classified. I think they already did it. It was supposed to be years after his death. Yeah, I've heard I don't of remember that. the year that they said. I can't J F Kennedy
So I know in history it says, what are the biggest re re revelations in disclassified JFK assassination files? And I think the History Channel covered that. But that was back in 2017. So back then they had a three year deadline and that was 2018. So they might be out already. It would probably be this year, what you're talking about. Yeah, you know, I was Trump. Marilyn Monroe, you know, she had an affair with Kennedy, and I believe she was killed. She was murdered by the CIA because she knew things that JFK would tell her, and then. She had made a comment like she was going to blow the lid off of everything and, and then bam, the next day, you know, she's found dead of a yeah, parent suicide. Yeah. But they did find my, very small needle marks on her. Because there's a book about her death called Goddess. And it, there's a picture of her after, before they uh, did the makeup and everything in the funeral home and there's a picture showing her before they put all the makeup and everything it was really eerie and they said that they found needle needle marks like someone had given her a shot of something that killed her that's crazy and sad. yeah it was i i think that she was going to blow the whistle on something that Kennedy was into and that's why she was murdered because she threatened to open her mouth. Yeah, Kennedy was going to do something big too and then that's when that happened. He was going to disclose a lot of stuff that they were doing behind the scenes and then all of a sudden that happened. It's a lot of, it's a lot of, it goes deep. <laughs> it's really Scary. Yep. Have you seen? And I have to look it up and put it on the video later. About the government, how they have experimented with psychics. So this is something that they know. This is a real psychics are a real thing. It's not like some scam or people trying to get money out of people. It's this is a legit ability. <laughs> you remember that movie? I haven't heard about that. I will have to look for it. Um, uh, it was, I don't know if it's, I'm confusing MK Ultra. This is where they get the inspiration for um, Stranger Things. And Stranger Things, I was watching it. I'm like, this looks really realistic. Like, this probably could be something real. And I went and started looking up stuff. And I found that they were experimenting some, somewhat of uh after production they had that going in the back they took uh some and i forget the name of the psychic they brought on somebody to experiment and to see if they could use remote viewing to see mars or any other places to see um enemy ground bases and it worked like they got information from them. Mm. It's it, it's really. Well, I did a project. Um, I don't remember what grade it was. I, I we were doing it was in science class. I don't remember what grade I was in, and we had to do. We were assigned a particular planet. We had to do a report on it and everything. Well, I ended up with Neptune. And what's interesting I remember about my report was, you know how far away it is from the sun. Um, it's the only other planet besides Earth that contained, they, they had, uh, it's the only other planet, it was, it was growing plant life. So it's the only other planet that could support life was what my report about Neptune was. Um, plant life was on Neptune, which is like 
you know, they they said Pluto is not a planet, so Neptune would be considered the last planet, and they found evidence of plant life on it. So it's really the only other planet in the universe of our our universe besides Earth that can support life form. And Neptune, you know, Neptune's um, king of uh, sea, is it? Well, this universe today. Well, I did this report back in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to say it a minute. So I went off the information back from the 80s. <laughs> it's like trying to say there's, uh, and I've heard of this too, on the moon there's people on the dark side. But they're not going to go and admit it on the on Google. You can't. <laughs> There's supposedly life yeah. on the moon, too. That's why we haven't gone out to the moon for years. Because when they went and they landed on the moon, they met with them. And that's why there's a part you can look it up on either History Channel or on one of those channels that they like to put on the conspiracy theories and stuff. That... Mm-hmm. Um, when when he says something mayday mayday and he it gets interrupted and they have to cut it off Apollo 10 2 minutes to LOS Apollo 10 loses contact with mission control and encounters an unidentified radio signal I don't know what the hell that was it's really weird there was something there interrupted and they have to cut it off the communication it's because they were talking to the the life forms on the moon. They got like, not jumped, but they got like, whoa, what are you doing on, on our planet? <laughs> kind of thing. And they didn't know what to do, so they cut communication. That's what supposedly... They're being territorial. Yeah, they're like, what are you doing here? You guys don't know what you're doing. How did you get well, up here? <laughs> I always heard that Russia has been to the dark side of the moon. That's Yep, I saw that. It's on the History Channel, too. I saw it the other day. Yeah, I watch that channel a lot. I like I've watch been watching the, the the Mystery of Oak Eye about four years now. That whole scenario is fascinating. Oh, the island? Where they're, like, searching Oak for treasure? Island. Yeah, I watched that. I stopped watching yeah. I Gotta Catch Up. I like that show. Now there's a new one out called The Mystery of Blind Frog on Saturdays, The Mystery of Blind Frog Ranch. Oh, I'm going to have to look um, into that. I haven't seen yeah, that. Yeah, it just it's a new series that just came out. They called they called it Blind Frog Ranch because they discovered these this I don't know how many miles of caves that under underground caves that they think treasure is buried in um, and they broke through and in, in a small area into the caves and all these frogs started coming or in. something happened with frogs and the frogs wouldn't move unless you touched them because they couldn't see because they'd spend their whole lives underground and in the dark and so so they couldn't, they wouldn't jump unless you touched them. So that's why they called it Blind Frog Ranch. That's crazy. And then I posted something a while back. Um, I was watching a show on, on UFOs and the Unexplained, and this kind of blew my mind. The It mentioned uh, the ranch. It was near Roswell, New Mexico, and the name of the ranch was the Corona Ranch. And I'm like, is that coincidence? Or because <laughs> I don't crazy. believe in coincidences. No, and I put neither. that on my page and I'm like, could this be connected to coronavirus? Like 
aliens because corona means in spanish crown that's all that is and the scientists gave him that name because it looks like a crown when you look in the microscope the virus so that's strange that they would say that yeah, and i put the article that I, sna- I did a screenshot and i put it on there and if you read it it says on there the corona ranch the the crash site was near a, a corona and i was like there's another asking people what their opinion about it because i don't believe in coincidences no. but there's another crash that it's not that public and i just saw it because i was watching the history channel i just put something on because i liked their stuff was it history channel because i got um what they call it discovery plus and i've been like catching up with all my favorite shows and i saw that yeah and they were talking about another crash that happened before 1947 not the Roswell, another one in Los in uh, Nevada. I Las Cruces. Yep, that one. And uh, Las Cruces is in New Mexico. That one. I um, think that's what it is. That the guy, the one survivor that's left from the story, like from the the one that experienced, he was a kid. He was a little kid. His mom um, was with him. They were like looking at something that happened and they saw what looked like a nuclear something like a nuclear explosion almost and his mom was watching this and lost her eye because of the just from the radiation and he since he's a little kid he went under the bed scared and he stayed under the bed until it got quiet then they came out. That's how he didn't get affected too much with the radiation, all that stuff. And I think it was from because of the the plane, or not the plane, the spacecraft crashing. And he, they, when they went to uh, look at what, what what was happening, it looked like little kids, but it wasn't little kids. It was little aliens in the craft, and they were like going back and forth, like you know, hurt and everything. But he didn't realize what it was at the time he wanted to go help because he thought it was just people that crashed and his dad was telling him no 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 and then later in life he's like thinking like this is this was aliens because he could remember now how they looked they were like little green high green gray looking are um, you talking about the one in england or no this one i, I saw never a show heard where there, there were these interviewing the children in england about the same experiences they had and they were describing they inter- you know how police separate you when they're doing an investigation so it you Elin don't or some or why, some influence their statements i forget what it was let me look it up first it was england was it but they were they separated the children and they all described the same alien form uh huh i can't it was called the UFO, uh, unexplained something on the History Channel. There's two of them. There's two schools that went through that, and I didn't know. There's, I think it's the, the some bomb. The, um, I'll just put the kids at school. And they had English, a British accent, so I'm thinking it was either England or uh, maybe Australia or let's see Zimbabwe. I just can't say it. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. I was just looking at this too the other day. So let me look at it. I'll just pick one. The story of children in Zimbabwe encountering a UFO. Let me look at something I can read. I don't want to put the video on. Well, I could put the screen share and put the video on for people that are watching. So I'm going to screen share. Where is... I wrote the name of the show. Uh, somewhere on my page under that Corona. Um, talking about the Roswell, New Mexico crash. Uh, I, I believe I mentioned the name of the show. If anything, I could look it up and put it in later, like 
the screenshot. The UFOs most unexplained or something yeah, like that. I think I, that's the one I was watching. That's where they come up with the. I find that so interesting because even if you want to look at it as a psychological, like, oh, they're just experiencing the kids just all went together in their imagination when wild. That's crazy that a whole group of kids would see the same exact thing and still remember the yeah, same Yeah, and kids thing. usually tell the truth because exactly. their minds haven't been molded and influenced. Exactly. I find that so... And then they were talking about and when he's in that, because I saw that same clip. They were talking about um, why did the aliens decided to stop next like to a school instead of like military base and if you think about it what's at a they have this rule and they've done it before there's another case that happened in los angeles years ago i think it was around the brass world time like 1940s the first time they came if that was them they started shooting all crazy at them in the and there's a picture of it you could find it in like old articles and you could see the lights and them like the military shooting up, like looking at trying to shoot the aircraft. This is like 1950s, 1940s mm. and it's called the Los Angeles battle, something like that. And I guess Well, there's a woman that claimed she was kidnapped and the aliens told her that the aliens did amniocentesis on her and at the time she was kidnapped, amniocentesis did not exist. What is that? So how would she know what amniocentesis was? She said the aliens told her. And then, because amniocentesis did not exist at that time. And then they also told her that they were from, which now they've already discovered, a, a, a twin, something about twin stars. Mm. And that's the city or something they were from. And then later, years later, they now discovered the, what she was talking about. And that the aliens said they used these galaxies as their like uh, trading paths where they share information. That's crazy if that's true. I don't remember. Yeah, this was the, amniocentesis didn't even exist. And she mentioned that word, and then later, year, I don't know how many years it was later, they started amniocentesis, but she said the word before it even existed, and because she kept saying her back hurt because they were putting a needle in her back. Where'd they take a sample from your spine, and the fluid? Uh-huh. And the, they, she said the aliens were, like, taking samples. Oh. Okay, I of think her I body and stuff, and everywhere that she she saved the dress and everything that they touched turned like a metallic pink, and the aliens everything they touched she saved her dress that she had on that day, and everywhere the aliens touched it left a transfer of like pink metallic something and they can't figure out what it is. And they still have the dress, and they try to get scientists to analyze it, and they don't know what it is. She kept saying they were taking samples from her body and amniotic fluid. They were taking, they take that from your spine with a needle. They suck it out and um, stick it between your vertebrae, and they suck it out somehow with a, it's called amniocentesis. Um, like pregnant women, um, get it done to test for if their baby has, I think, genetic uh, or major deformities and stuff like that. Yeah. The amniotic fluid. Yeah. So they don't have to go. Okay. Now I know what that is. Wow. These are some topics. (laughs) <laughs> um, I was gonna say something. I went right. It's always good that. science. So that's <laughs> so. This is what makes me believe there's UFOs and stuff. Because she said that, and then Bob Lazar, who a lot of people don't believe in too much, but he's the one. I think it's him. He's a scientist from the 
Area 51. And he was talking about a element that no one knew yet about. And in the 90s is when they discovered this element. <laughs> Correction. Discovery was found by scientists in a joint institute for liquid research in Dubai, Russia, and scientists in Lawrence Livermore. <laughs> And no one had known what it was and until then. And he was telling or talking about this element in the 80s, early 80s. So that, that, that's crazy. It makes you want to think <laughs> that this could be legit. Yeah, I mean, I think aliens had a lot to do with uh, the building of the pyramids and Hinge and all these massive, the Aztec, you know, all the massive structures, because there's no way, like, especially Stonehenge, those those rocks have to weigh tons and tons, and there's no way humans could have done that. Yeah, there's no way. I was just seeing something, even my engineer, um, I, we have family in the, the, that are in an engineers, and I'm always been like this. Like I'll talk to them like with these strange topics. I'll be like, "What do you think about Egypt? Or what do you think about the pyramids?" And he's like, "There's no way." <laughs> and they're yeah, yeah. Like Egypt has perfectly their precise measurements in Egypt, and the pyramids and everything. Their measurements are like to the degree, and it's all scientific and angles and it's like a they had like I believe they had alien knowledge technology and they have you know their <laughs> angles and the way that they position the pyramids and um like you can take a piece of sheet of notebook paper and the stones on the pyramids are so tight you can't even take a sheet of notebook paper and slide it between the rocks yeah, I saw that. I'm like, how can you do that by hand and make it perfect? That's insane. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I might cut it there for now because I think we've been talking how long? I don't mind it, but I think it's been almost, almost two Two Almost two hours, <laughs> and I enjoyed it though. Cause I just have to organize myself more to have it. Um, so there's more like topics on the notes, and this is my plan in the future. This is what I want the show to be about, and like I like coast to coast, and I like the radio shows that like let people in to talk and like continue their topic, and it's just like this huge, <laughs> um, what a discussion between everybody that's into this. In the future, if you guys Network. want, yeah. In the future, if you guys are watching or anybody, if you guys help me get to a thousand uh, subscribers, I think it is, I can go live and then let people comment and we could chat and continue conversation. I can let people pop in. I might do it sooner than that because I think I could do it with stream, Streamyard, but I have to figure out how to play with that. <laughs> And I want to like. Well, now of... Nick has sixteen hundred students in his school, so maybe you can work something with him. I I I think they're too shy because <laughs> I've been telling them, hey, you can pop up. It doesn't have to be just Patty or, um, uh, Rachel Leo, the teachers. You guys can come on because your stories are just as valid and and interesting to me because it's. I find it even more interesting that a normal person day to day has these experiences and there are and everybody everywhere. was born with ESP. Yeah. And I was just saying this last night. Everybody is born with some kind of ability and more people there's like people like us are more prone to be more open and develop it. Some people just are born with it naturally. The others are just everybody's born with some kind of ability, psychic ability to some degree that they just don't know how they don't realize they have yeah. it and they're closed minded. And, but everybody is born with some kind of psychic ability. Yeah. It's nothing to be scared of. It's like, it's like a talent. Like some people are good at singing just right off the bat or just 
some people are good at writing that's what i see when you you say psychic psychic it's like a it's just one not just one but psychic it's like an umbrella of what it is and there's so many different abilities under that umbrella that people have that are different and unique and it makes me want to like what do you what have you experienced what are you doing like it's like different things like you mentioned something today so now i have nine abilities <laughs> of eight. because i've been studying eight. this for like since i was i didn't realize that i was this is my evil eye anti-jealousy bracelet those are good right there oh, that's to and this is my reiki anything. bracelet with the um the tree of life tree of life charm on it i like that so yeah this is I an know. evil eye anti-evil eye that's what anti-jealousy <laughs> it has magnets on it so it helps me like to protect from messing up the equipment because <laughs> i mess up yeah i've been charm and the back of it is magnetic but I haven't posted yet. Yet I got all kinds of cool jewelry, but I haven't posted it yet. I want to get more so, stuff later. Which it helps. I'm kind of in a like. I feel like I should be quiet. It's like that. It's just like the meme about it. The woman posted a meme and it said, "Because I'm sitting here wondering why am I? I don't feel supercharged right now." And she's the meme referred to people that are sensitives are being more particular who they share or who they let know that they have abilities. Yeah. And for some reason, there's a reason why we're all and more picky and letting people in and stuff like that. Cause I've noticed I've been getting friend requests and I've been deleting a lot of them because I just, why I just, you don't feel safe. I'm getting more particular. Yeah. Your ability is like, no, don't do that one. Yeah, he should, that person's cool. No, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, it's your intuition <laughs> telling you, like, who's cool and who's, like, there to troll. <laughs> yep. So, um, Courtney, thank you for coming on the show. In the future, I hope it repeats. And in the future, I want to try to have more people come in at once and like have a community to talk and express themselves and their stories and stuff and it was fun <laughs> so i appreciate it thank you for coming on yeah that was interesting it, it, it was <laughs> so you guys uh like share and subscribe and join nick's uh, paranormal community they have a lot of cool stuff a lot of cool classes patty negri um, Richard Leo, Father Sebastian, who else is teaching? Uh, James. Kai Cooper, Renee Watt, Nicole Marie. James, uh, Bishop James Long. Like, it's all mm -hmm. different religions, different, but with one mindset. And it's it's just a way to learn more about, especially people that have abilities and don't know where to go. That it's all them. relative. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks, Courtney, and see you for next time.